Hey friend, it's Dawn here. Welcome to my channel. I'm so excited to be sharing with you how we took Megan here from stripey chunky highlights to the most beautiful blended balayage with my balayage color correction technique. No foils were involved, all open air hair painting. You are going to love this transformation. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to get into the nitty gritty for you because I love giving you these tips and tricks. But before I do, why don't you hit that subscribe and that bell because every Monday I come at you with time-saving, money-making, stress-reducing tips and tricks for your business. So here you can see I'm taking a teardrop section. This is so that I can create that rooted look. Megan did not, she had roots, but it didn't look rooted. There's a big difference. And so she had these stripy, chunky, foiled highlights that were kind of a blonde color. So I did this teardrop so that I can mimic that natural rooted look when I go to apply the first step in this. So as you can see, I took a color just one shade lighter than her natural and I went through and I started blending out that line of demarcation on some of those highlights. So I went through, I didn't go through all of her hair, I didn't go through the underneath, but the most important part is I started taking sections here through that teardrop section and applying it down. I wanted to create more depth. She was okay with going a little bit darker, creating more pockets of depth. So I pulled it through in some sections there, but also going through and just blending out the demarcation. So you can see that I'm also smoothing it out with my fingers, running it over as well as taking a comb through it. This is because you can't really create that actual blend with color, but I'm using Shades EQ by Redken. And by using the wide tooth comb section, it actually helps distribute that color down and kind of blend it in. So I smooth it through my fingers to make sure that it's applied thoroughly. And then I use my wide tooth comb to make sure it blends out. And that's why I don't have a really big distinction between colors and you can see that this is a two-step process but you can see there's that big chunk there I'm blending it out with the shades EQ and then I'm gonna comb through it to kind of create that softness and kind of mimic that blend that I can actually create with the clay lightener later so this is a tricky part getting close to the front you can see there was some pretty chunky pieces I'm just going over that like first inch just to blend out the demarcation so that that's gonna make my life a little bit easier. And the reason why I'm using Shades EQ is because you can lift it really good with lightener later. And I wanna make sure the most important thing for me is giving my clients longevity. It's really easy to do a Band-Aid fix for something, but then create more work for them and get not let them get their hair goals in the end. So I'm using Shades EQ to give that like translucent, kind of blend up that demarcation. Now I'm going over some of the other pieces because she had a lot of that blorange in her hair. And we're not trying to get her blonde but I want to cut out some of that orangey warmth so that we can tone it and have more of a neutral tone rather than trying to fight. So I'm trying to lift it a little bit higher so that we can tone it down in a cooler way. And this is just going to help start to create the blend. So this is step one, going over those roots, creating more of a rooted look than roots, blending out that demarcation, and then bumping up some of those stripey chunky bits that are stuck in that level six, seven area and blending it together. You can see there's those two big stripes down, just like bridging the gap between the two, finding like the money pieces, bringing some pop around her face, but I'm still gonna go in afterwards to do a second step. So this is kind of step one, kind of creating the bridge from chunky and stripy to more of a blended look. And then I'm gonna go through again after. So around the face is one of the most important places. You can see how many stripes and chunks. This is just going over and blending it. I'm not going any higher than her color or her highlights already are. Even though you can see that demar demarcation there from the previous foils, I'm going through and creating blend and pop, which is gonna give like a seamless transition. I wanna make sure Megan stays looking like a brunette but with pops of highlights and more blended. It's amazing how you can go brighter and bolder when it's blended, but when there's that harsh demarcation line, it shows up a lot more. It doesn't look as natural. It doesn't have as much flow. One of the biggest compliments I get from my clients is like, people looked at me and said like, something's different. Did you go on a vacation? Do you have a tan? My hair looks so believable and natural that they don't even notice. They notice me as a whole rather than my hair standing out. Like, you know, when someone just had a fresh set of foils and all you see is their scalp, this is going to work against that. So you can see I'm going a little bit closer right near the front of her face, angling backwards. You don't have to worry about overlapping with clay lightener as much because 
it's not, it doesn't work the same. Clay lightener is like a slow cooker and foils are like a hot oven. So boom, there you can see step one, it already looks a lot more rooted versus having roots. And it looks way, way more blended, but still not, that's even without toning, but still not quite the tone. It still looks like she's kind of trying to be ombre and trying to be blonde. And that's not what we want to go for here. Also, let's give Megan super props for spinning that chair so slowly and methodically for me to get a, a full 360 of her hair. I was like, slowly spin for me, please. <laughs> but yeah, look at that. Isn't that awesome? So on to step number two. I've got more shades EQ. I've got my clay lightener. Some of the brands I like is I like Oligo Blacklight. I like Redken Freehand. I like Eugene Perma Solaris Powder 6. Um, but you can see now I'm going through and I'm going to be applying highlights and low lights to create brightness, create more of that blend, cut through some of that orange. I'm not gonna have to go through all those ends clearly, but I wanna create a more lived in natural look. So remember, I didn't go through all of this with the shades before, but you can see that's kind of like that level 78 that's really orange. So I'm just kind of going over top of a few pieces to create some colors of pop, some create some pockets of pop as well as depth. You can see here, I go in my U shape pattern. If you want to know more about sectioning, check out some of my other videos all about sectioning the hair. So going through, adding some more highlights, going on both sides of the section there, wanting to make sure I'm going thorough, creating a really good blend. That's really important when using clay lightener, as well as you can see, I'm wiping off my gloves also really important. Clay lightener is really forgiving. You can see there's like little bits and pieces of it here and there on the top of her hair. That's not going to lighten at all. It's not like getting regular traditional bleach on the hair. So here you can see I'm taking my Shades EQ. I'm kind of squiggling it over and smooshing it through with my fingers. Technical terms always on this channel, you guys. <laughs> and then I use a wide end tooth comb, like I was saying to you before, to pull through. That's to create those depths of pockets of depth. So what I try to think of is if I was working on virgin hair, where would I put the highlights and where would I not put them? And where I wouldn't put them is where I go in and put the low light where, cause her hair has been previously lightened. So I'm kind of thinking backwards, reverse engineering it where, oh, so you can see I got lightener on there. I just smooth it right out. Super forgiving. Let's not be too like hoity toity around here. I keep it pretty real with you guys because this is the real stuff that happens every day. But you can see they're smoothing it out with my fingers, but still wanting to comb it through to make sure it's fully saturates all the way through. Creating those pockets of depth where if she was all virgin hair, I wouldn't have put a highlight there. So then I'm kind of repigmenting the hair, going through with the clay lightener, bumping it up a little bit, creating more blend. You can see underneath the crown, I can go higher, but to give that rooted look as I work up, I can drop the highlights down lower. So here I can see I want depth there. I'm gonna apply it there. I'm gonna blend it with my fingers and push it through to get all the way saturated. And then I'm gonna use a wide tooth comb to make sure it goes all the way through. As well, the wide tooth comb kind of pulls it down and creates that blend, mimicking as close as possible to what clay lightener would do. Her hair, this is my first time doing her hair, transitioning from foils to balayage, and it's a correction. It's only gonna get better, it's all, it turns out so good. Just wait, you gotta stick around to the end of this video. It turns out so freaking awesome. But also it's gonna get better every single time. And the one thing that I communicate, you guys know I'm really big on communication. I've got my program, Rock Your Consultation, all about setting up expectations um, so that we can have happy clients always. But communicating to her like it's going to be good, but it's even going to get better as I do your hair more. So you can see here, I'm still creating a U shape pattern, bringing it up closer on the sides, dropping it down in the center, wanting to create that rooted look versus giving her roots. So here's where we get. This is a section that everyone always asks me about. So I'm creating that depth. You can see you can drop this part of the crown down quite a bit further because those highlights underneath that you went up a little bit higher with are going to peek through. We forget that the hair is three dimensional. We fear like, oh, if I, this if this top part and you can see I just pointed there keeping the U. If this top part's not high up, you won't see it. You're going to see all that hair underneath when it moves. So you can see I created that nice U and that last section is dropped down from the two on the other sides. So now I'm wake, make my way, making my way downtown. No, sorry, <laughs> making my way to the sides, creating some depth. Now Megan has some postpartum hair. You might have just seen there, little bits around her face. Uh, I just left those out because I don't want to highlight them. If I highlight them, it draws attention to them. We don't want to draw attention to the little hairs growing out. Here, adding in depth, pushing through some of those stripy chunks that are still showing up. Here's the thing, you guys, is that. 
I never guarantee the straight all the stripey chunks will be gone. I tell my clients I'm going for a final look that looks amazing. If you pick through your hair, you might see pieces here and there that still look stripey and blended. But my goal is when you look at your hair and when you wear it down, it looks flowy. So communication is like our number one tool in this job and setting up proper expectations. I used to always over promise thinking by telling them I could give them what they loved, that they'd be happy and confident in me and so often disappointing them. I always say, you're not a people pleaser, you're a people disappointer. Be realistic about your expectations. People will love you and trust you more because of it. All right, money piece, money piece. <laughs> uh, you can still see there's some stripey bits there. So I'm just going over and you can still see it's kind of stuck in that blorangey zone. I'm gonna be toning her hair down, but I wanna create that really rich blend. I wanna have some nice bold pieces around the face without chunks. So the cool thing is, is with balayage, with this form of balayage, with this application, you can see I'm going on both sides. So when she pulls her hair back or runs her fingers through, you're gonna see that pop of color flow through her hair on both sides. But we can go quite a bit bolder because the blend softens it. If you think of like putting like four foils back to back, that's a pretty big chunk. But when you create that blend and you don't have this huge line of demarcation, um, it, it you can get a lot more bolder and it doesn't look as strong. Now here's a really important piece. You want that front piece to pop, you gotta put depth beside it. So going through with the low light, blending it through, it's very similar to a natural color. I don't want it to look false. I just wanna kind of pull it through as if I was working on her natural color. So I wanted to like mimic her virgin color, pulling that comb through. Oh my goodness, my dog just snored in the background while recording this and it's the cutest thing ever. I hope it picks up on the mic. You can see already putting that dark piece beside makes that front piece pop so much more. Now here's my other little trick. When you wanna create a little bit of lift but you need to drop the root from the previous highlights, I put a little bit of the, of the uh, low light there, blending it through just to create that blend on the strand, get rid of the demarcation, because I actually want the color to pop lower down. But that's still not as bright as I want. I'm picking up the pieces that I want to lighten up there, and I'm putting the lightener over top of it, blending it into that low light. So that way I can still lift that piece up a little bit higher, but I can also transition from how high up her highlights were to that more rooted look. So you can see there that angle going down. So onto the other side, you can see those postpartum baby hairs. Once again, do not highlight them. I know we kind of want to get tempted to because they're kind of in a place where we normally put a highlight, but by creating lightness around her face on those baby hairs, we're going to accentuate them more. I just want them to grow out at right now and she can hide them and tuck them behind her hair, hair behind her ear because Megan has a crap load of hair, so much hair. But you can see still covering up some of those old highlights that were just way too high that were giving her a look of having roots. I'm creating a rooted look with this color correction balayage going up through being okay with touching that little bit of, of shades EQ but creating those slants and transitioning it backwards you always want the highlights higher up around the face so you can see from step one we did do a lot of blending but there's still quite a bit of that chunkiness and so I'm kind of going in and over top uh, once again it's okay to over overlap I'm not always pulling it through all the way to the ends because her ends are quite light, but I'm overlapping in that like mid strand area, creating a new pattern, showing that we can create blending rather than stripiness and kicking it up a notch so that we don't have to fight to cancel out orange tones where we can just tone down later. Once again, clay lightener is like a slow cooker. Foils are like, like a hot oven. Clay lightener you can overlap with more because it's not as harsh on the hair low light time. I hope you're getting the effect of this. The low light goes beside the highlight to make the highlight pop. I always say the low light is the supporting actor role. It doesn't get the spotlight. You usually don't even notice that it's there, but it makes the star shine. It is a really, really, the supporting role is so important to make those highlights pop. If you don't have the low light, if you don't have the supporting role, then the highlight won't be as impactful blending out that demarcation there so that I can drop the highlight down a little bit further. But going through, you can see, and then I even put a little bit of that there. I can cover over top of it. It's okay, it's really forgiving and really easy. The reason I like this is because I'm a messy colorist. I always would like really love how people were neat and tidy with things, but I'm like gritty and creative and I get my hands dirty and I get messy and not in like an unprofessional way, 
But knowing that I can, if a little thing happens, I can like a little blip or something, I can work over top of it. You can see those slants. They're like moving towards the back. They're creating a natural flow of the hair. If the sun was to highlight her hair naturally, that's the way it would go. So I'm loving how you can look at this as you apply it. Unlike foils, you can't look and see, oh, how's that gonna look? Cause all the hair is caught up in a foil. You can look at this and see, oh, it's gonna look so freaking bomb at the end. Putting that low light right beside the money piece, combing it through, not all the way to the ends because I wanna keep her ends lighter. Think of how the sun bleaches hair. Little, Think of a little kid's hair after the summer. They've always got these beautiful highlights and their ends are always lighter. Naturally, without, without coloring hair, natural virgin hair, the ends are always lighter because they've been exposed to the elements longer so once again going to that money piece I want to have both sides covering up a little bit of that stripey chunkiness with the with the low light it's okay to be creative it's okay to go flow, go with the flow see where it needs I'm a very visual learner and a kinesthetic learner meaning I like to get my hands in there and sometimes lightener drops <laughs> just pick it up and give the camera a smile. <laughs> See, I told you, I'm a messy colorist. I get into it and I'm not saying, my clients, I'm still very professional with them. Um, I'm not like making, like it's not like a bomb exploded at my station by any means. I clean as I go, but be okay with being human. But there you go. You can see how she, we, she doesn't have roots anymore, but giving her a rooted look. This is the processing of step two. Boom. Now we were fighting with daylight here. So you can tell the lighting's different, but you can already tell just like how much more blended, how much better it looks. Oh my gosh. It's toned down. It looks better, less orangey, more creamier. Damn, Megan, you look fine. All right, if you enjoyed this and you want to learn more about sectioning or about creating the blender, about how to mix clay lightener, go check out my other videos here. You are going to love them. Thanks for watching, friend. We'll see you in the next video.